Hey, WFO Universe, want something for free? Send a self-addressed stamped envelope with plenty of postage, and we'll load it up with free WFO stickers. That's right, I said free. Send your envelope, care of Castello Media, slash WFO stickers to P.O. Box 848-353, Pembroke Pines, Florida, 33084. Do it now. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started with our post-race media availabilities. We got our race-winning crew chief, Jeremy Bullens, from the number 12 Dented Wizard Ford for Team Penske. Uh, we'll go ahead and open up to questions. We'll start here up front with Jordan and then over to Dustin. Uh, Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. I have two questions. First, um, when Ryan spun uh, yesterday, uh, you take me through that. Uh, you're thinking we're, we're out of it. Uh, we still have a good enough car to come back. Just walk me through that. Yeah, we knew we had a fast car. You know, we worked our way to the lead right there. So, um, you know, it was unfortunate what happened of of spinning the pit road. But, um, you know, like I told him last night, I'm glad we got that out of the way early and we didn't damage the car in any way. And uh, we kind of know what the limits are at that point. So um, there's no reason, you know, we pretty much recovered from it, got back to 10th by the end of the stage. So we knew we had a good car and, and just put it in behind us and move on. You know, take me through the last lap. You, you, Ryan Newman's got the lead. You guy comes back. Are you thinking we're going to win this? We're going to lose this? What do you take me through that? Well, I, you know, we knew that once you get to the bottom in the lead, you know a run's coming from somewhere. Um, and the the eleven had had a great recovery day and, and was pushing the six pretty hard, and um, we saw them coming. But you know, just hoping that we can play enough defense and get those guys separated. And Ryan did a great job of, of kind of getting those guys separated and, and getting the run back to get by the six to the line. And, and that was really the difference was uh, the moves that he made with those guys coming on the outside. Okay, over here, Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Uh, with, with your win, you put some other people in, in a tough spot. Basically, there's an 18-point gap with the last cutoff spot and those outside. 18 points can be made up in a lot probably easier here than at Kansas. What would, what's the challenge of, if you were trying to make up 18 points going into Kansas? How much this you know, helps you, know, you avoid I've, that situation? I feel like going into Kansas, you would have needed to probably win both stages. I mean, you, you've got to have a pretty good stage point advantage over the guys that, you know, that you're trying to race um, to make up that kind of points. And, uh, you know, I, I told the team after the first round that we needed to win a race in this, in this stage. The way the, the playoff points thing – uh, it carries over, you know, when you get to the round of 12, there's a pretty big gap from, from 12th to 10th uh, to the lead. So um, I felt like we needed to win a race, and, and that was our goal. And, um, you know, obviously this week and next week have been good tracks for us. We haven't won at either one of them, but we've run very well at both of them. So we felt like uh, going into it, we had a shot at winning one of these, and, and that was kind of like our goal. Um, we felt like we needed to do that. And, you know, I, I'm really excited about the round of eight because it's some great racetracks for us. So. Um, you know, for us, we're a little bit playing on house money, and we'll go try to win a championship. And also, you talk about stage points. I think six stage points today. Uh, obviously, the win makes that, in one sense, irrelevant. But how much did you feel like was maybe left on the table those two stages? How things kind of worked yeah. out? Yeah. How much concern did you have? After I mean, I felt like we left nine stage points on the table yesterday. You know, with with spinning in the first stage and getting back to tenth. You know, uh, we had control of the race at that point when we spun. So. Um, you know that you feel like you left some points on the table at that point and if we'd have got those if we could have managed and controlled the second stage and won that stage I think we would have been like second or third on stage points for the race and that would have been good um, but you know like I said you at the end of the day you're trying to win and you know that this format requires wins and, and we, we get tired of hearing that the 12 cars led the most laps without winning and all that kind of stuff so um, you know we, we're we're trying to win races as hard as anybody and um, the, the efforts there and and you know sometimes you just need things to play out for you and today it did okay let's go back here to Zach Zach Albert NASCAR.com Jeremy um, looking at the score sheet uh, four forwards in the top five um, I know there was a lot made about manufacturers working together and things like that um, I guess it would be nice to say that was by design but at the, at the end of this thing I mean how much of it was just every person every driver for himself really well, I think that the cool thing about the last lap is a Ford was going to win, right? So, we, you know, we were racing the six. So, we, you know, obviously we needed the win from a playoff standpoint, um, but I don't take anything away from those guys wanting to win a race. I mean, they, they need to win a race as much as anybody does. So, um, you know, I appreciate the fact that everybody raced hard and did what they had to do. And, um, you know, we had a bunch of Fords up there, and one was going to win the race. And, and the manufacturer thing is very important. You know, those guys uh, – um, probably don't get enough credit for the support they give to the race teams and, and across the board, whether it be Ford or, or any of the others. But 
um, you know, appreciate everything that they do. And, and it's our job to try to do the best we can for them and, and to get a forward in victory lane and just really happy it was a 12 car. Okay, any more questions? All right, Jeremy, thank you. Thank you, guys. It's real quiet in here. All right, we'll go ahead and continue with our post-race media availabilities. We now have the race-winning driver, Ryan Blaney, driver of the number 12, Dent Wizard Ford for Team Penske. We'll go ahead and open it up to questions. We'll start here with Jordan in the front. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. Uh, when Newman passed you out of four, he built up just a little bit of an advantage. Did you think you were going to be able to get back to him, or did you think that was it? Can you kind of walk me through that there? Yeah. Um, yeah, so they're really the last lap. You know, I saw the 11 and 6 coming on the top, down the back. They were they were tandem together. And I saw them coming, and I wanted to pull up, but they were coming so much faster than us that if I would have pulled up and tried to block them, they just would have split me. Um, you can't block runs like you used to with this package. Um, there's none of that really – really none of that air bubble anymore that we used to talk about. You just run through the guy's bumper. So, um, And the runs are a lot larger, especially when you tandem like they did. So – I figured my best bet was to try to pull the 11 off of them. Um, you know, and that's, that's kind of what I did. You know, luckily I was able to get to the 11's quarter panel in three, pull him off the six. And then I, I knew Eric Almarola was going to come push me through to the bottom. And then we both would be clear. And then it's just all about making a move. You know, and hopefully you make the right move at the right time on the front stretch there. And it, that one just happened to work out. But um, I knew if I could separate them and, Stay on the bottom and come out second. We had a shot at uh, at Newman. So, okay, let's go back here to Jacob and then over here to the man in the blue hat. Jacob Seelman, Speed Sport. Ryan, uh, two questions. First, uh, after last week having the suspension issue and being pretty buried coming in here, how much of a relief now is it knowing that you're on? There's no stress at Kansas. You're through to the next round. Well, it's huge. You know, I mean. After last week, uh, having that trouble with uh, with the you know some parts breaking, um, we really our mindset was really we had to win one of these two races. I mean that was we were so far back in points. I know Talladega is a wild card. Um, you know there's a lot of wrecks today, and a lot of guys got tore up, but we didn't really get any stage points, and, and we were already pretty far behind the eight ball. So we knew we had to probably win one of these two weeks, and um, yeah, it's just a huge relief. I mean after having such a bad weekend. Last week, um, you know, it's nice to get a win and lock you into the next round for sure. Um, but you still go out and try to win Kansas. You know, I mean, it's not – you're not relaxing in Kansas. Um, you still try to go out and win that race. But um, really a big weekend for our team after the troubles we had last week. Now, the outlook for the round of eight, you know, it's tracks that you've historically been pretty decent at. But knowing that there's three guys that have a pretty big points buffer compared to where you guys have been at this year, do you feel like you're going to have to win one of those races to make sure you're at Homestead? Uh, yeah, I definitely think so. You know, you kind of see in the last couple of years that there's a, you know, a few guys that have a pretty big points lead from having phenomenal regular seasons and with bonus points and things like that. And yeah, I mean, you got to win the race to win the championship in Homestead. So you better get used to try to win in big races. And, um, you know, you know, wins have kind of eluded us this year after I felt like we should have had two or three already. And it was nice to just put one together, but, um, yeah, I, I definitely think it'll take a, a win in the round of eight to get you to the championship for, if you are not, you know, one of those top guys that have had, you know, tons of wins throughout the regular season, and a lot of bonus points. Okay, go ahead. Christian Coley, FrontStretch.com. Kind of bouncing off of Jacob's question. The next round, you've got three good tracks that you've been all pretty good at. You know, which of the three uh, do you feel like you could go out and win, if not all three? But where do you feel like you could punch your ticket to Homestead? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, honestly, all three have been really good to us the last couple of years. Um, we ran great at Martinsville. We've run great at Martinsville the last couple of years and had a great run um, in the spring running fourth in Texas. We were leading when we blew up um, about halfway through that race. And then Phoenix, we led a lot and ended up third. So I, I feel like they're all really strong for us. Um, it's just a matter of executing. You know, I, I feel like either one of those three races earlier this year we could have won. Um, you know, just had a problem at Texas or, you know, just weren't quite fast enough there at the end of those races. So, um, I think those are three really good tracks for us. It's just a matter of executing and, 
and doing all that we can in our power to run the race the best that we can and, and adapt, you know, throughout the race and, um, and do the best. But, uh, yeah, the round of, uh, this next round, pretty good tracks for us. So hopefully we can rise to the occasion. Let's go over here in the middle and then to Lee. Uh, Tyler had 960, the ref. You led the most laps today with 35. What do you feel like you did better than everybody else that kept you out front so much? Uh, nothing. I mean, it's just th this race and now, you know, you get, you know, last year and a couple years prior to that, it was a lot easier for the leader to block lanes and control the race, you know, and um, I thought Brad was a – Brad and Joey were great examples of being able to control the whole race with – being able to air block and things like that. And nowadays, like I talked about earlier, you just can't do that. I mean, you cannot, there's no air bubble to kind of push the leader out front. So you can't play different lanes. You're just trying to push as hard as you can. Um, you know, there's a couple instances we came off pit road first and we were able to just run the bottom and run it pretty decent. Um, I know we led a little bit. I didn't really think about that, but um, it wasn't no one dominating this race. You know, I mean, I think you can look back at this whole race and there wasn't it, anyone with a dominantly fast car you know it just kind of was all about the help behind you the runs that you could get where you took your runs um this this speed racing is so tough nowadays with the way the cars are now um you you don't see any domination anymore which is probably good for the fans right i mean it's you don't have anybody leading 100 laps of the race it's all mixing up i don't know how many green flag passes there were there's probably a lot and um you know yeah a little bit more wrecks than i'd like to see but you're just going to have those when people are pushing really hard like they did today but, um, yeah, it's just circumstantial. I mean, we just found ourselves in the lead a little bit throughout the race, and we're shuffled back to the front. It's just kind of the way things are now. Lee Spencer, the Racing Boys, can you just talk about your range of emotions from Dover and going to the seller of the points and then, you know, coming in here knowing you have to run well, you spin going on a pit road even though you have yeah. the fastest car, yeah. uh, and then come back tonight after, you know, one, one crash after another to win this thing? Yeah, definitely a, a big range of emotions, right? I mean, this is what sports are about. Um, see ya. Bye. Um, that was the weirdest thing I've ever been a part of. Asked questions and left. Didn't want to write it down. Nice question. Uh, no, I mean, it, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to think. Um, no, it just, uh, you know, from – from our trouble yesterday, uh, spinning, coming on to pit road, leading the race, obviously that's something you want to forget, right? I mean, um, you, you learn what to do better next time, but you want to forget about that. Um, and then having a night in between is honestly worse. You could have kind of dwelling on it and saying, man, what, why the heck did I do that? That was so dumb. And, um, and then, you know, missing a bunch of wrecks today. Um, you know, I feel like all the other speedway races this year, we've gotten collected in someone else's mess you know, and, and none of our doing it. A lot of guys had that happen to them today. It's just the way that speedway racing goes. Um, but today we were able, we were able to be in a spot to see the wreck happen and miss it. Um, which has not been the case this year for us. We've always been just wadded up in it and nowhere to go. Um, but yeah, just a wild race, you know, and that comes from people pushing really hard, you know, that literally that's what people got turned from of people pushing very extremely hard in these cars. The bumpers don't connect well. And the, the rear springs are so stiff that it's easy to turn cars to the right. And, um, you know, you saw a lot of that happen today. I think that was pretty much every wreck of cars getting getting kind of sideswiped uh, on the rear bumpers. But um, luckily we were able to make it through those and then capitalize on the opportunities we were given at the end of the race. Okay, let's go to Dustin and then Jerry. Dustin Long, uh, NBC Sports. You said earlier you knew you had to win. You felt like you had to win one of these next two races. I understand you guys go into every race or you go into every race looking mm -hmm. to win, but when you get to this point and feel like you have to win and understand your situation, what, what is that like? How is, is that any different or how do you try to keep it the same from week to week? Because it's the playoffs. It's not the same. Yeah. I mean, it's the same, but it's different. You know, I mean, you, yeah. I mean, I always say every, our mindset every week, any team's mindset is to win the race every week. Right. But, uh, when you realize what's on the line and if you're in i wouldn't call our situation this weekend a must win situation but it was a we it was most likely we had to win the race um here at kansas to advance with how good guys were in uh on points but um yeah it's definitely a, a tough thing you know it's we like to say that there's no pressure on it but there's a lot i mean there's um there's a lot of pressure um internally that can sometimes come out 
Uh, maybe you don't show it very often. I don't show it very often, but it, it does come out every now and then um, because this is what you love to do. And uh, there's a lot of a lot of things on the line. Um, but yeah, just definitely uh, a really important day for us to to do well. We didn't get a lot of stage points, so I was kind of worried about that throughout the day. And like the 24, the 88 did. Um, you know, and then they had their problems. But uh, just you know, yeah, just a you know, you go into these weekends kind of focused on you know. There's good and bad to having to win. A, you got nothing really to lose, you know, right? You're pretty far back, and you're going to be really aggressive on things. Uh, but it, but then you know that you have nothing to lose, and you're going to maybe put yourself in some sketchy situations. Um, so there's kind of good and bad to that. But um, I've always kind of been a taking chances kind of person. So I think that that even though I don't want us to see it, don't want to see us in this situation, it's it kind of almost brings an extra fire to people. You, you've you've advanced this far a couple of years ago, and mm -hmm. and uh, you know we're almost like essentially I guess almost in a kind of a must win situation at Phoenix. You yeah. you, you responded by winning the poll, and then things didn't work out. What uh, other than being two years and just everything you've gained in two years? What can that experience of of being in that round, being so close to to Miami, potentially help you as you get ready for the this upcoming round of eight? Yeah, um, I mean. You know, like I said earlier, on there's you know there's a few guys that are really good on points right now, and you're probably going to have to win in the round of eight to advance if you're not one of those guys. Um, and that's, I mean, I said you got to win Miami, so I mean, most likely you got to win the race. So better get used to that. Better get used to that mindset. Um, but yeah, we had this shot a couple years ago with uh, the Wood Brothers in 17, and um, and and got to Phoenix, won the pole, and then just didn't run well enough. We were kind of too far out. Um, but it's, you know, you just want to put yourself in a spot to have a chance, you know, and, and that's really all you can ask for. And, and now our chance is, is here. It's in the round of eight. We have our chance to go to Miami. Um, but we got knocked out now. You have no chance. So all you're looking for is an opportunity to kind of capitalize on a situation and on a, on a race like we did today. Um, so I feel really confident we can go out and win any of those three races, um, in the round of eight. Those are really good tracks for us. So, um, that's kind of what our focus is. So, yeah. Okay, on Jerry. Jerry Jordan, kicking the tires on net. <laughs> Last week, uh, Harvick talked about safety as the biggest change he's seen in 20 years, and we saw a lot of cars kind of some crazy wrecks today mm -hmm. airborne but landed on its wheels. When you're driving through that, what is going through your mind? So, I mean, we, we were over 200 miles an hour several times uh, on multiple laps today. Does, does any of that going through your head? What were you thinking when, when cars are, are – doing a full flip at the front of the field uh i mean when you're racing and you're green flag you're not thinking of that you know you're thinking of honestly i don't think about it at all the safety side of it at, at all and granted you know i haven't been around that long so i don't you know it's easy for someone like kevin to relate right and i, I think even watching my dad grow up in it it's amazing what it's done from the early 2000s um when i could kind of understand the safety stuff but i don't think about that when we're racing i don't think anyone does but yeah, Brendan gone flipped right in front of me today, and um, I was kind of surprised. I was I don't know how he got clipped. And these cars can get clipped in certain ways that catch air underneath them and flip them up. Larson had it done to him in the spring race here. Um, you know, you, you hope they're okay. You know, I mean, you I asked right away, is Brendan all right? And I know he landed on all four, which was good. But you're worried about it bottoming out onto the frame rails and him hurting his back. But uh, I think he was okay from what I was told. But uh, it's just nothing I really think about. I mean, I don't think about, I'm not dr running out there 200 miles an hour thinking about thinking of, okay, am I going to get hurt? Uh, I just, I just never thought about that, you know, and maybe some guys do. Um, granted, you know, some of them have more family than I got, you know, I have, I don't have children or a wife or anything like that. So uh, maybe it changes your mind a little bit, but uh, it's just, I know the safety side is amazing now. Um, even since I started, let's say even saying late models, you know, it's just amazing the safety stuff that, uh, improvements they've made, but, um, it's just nothing that really crosses my mind. I'm confident in all of it. Any more questions? All right, Ryan. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. This is WFO Radio.